Let's do a little uh, example here. Um, we're going to discuss a, uh, a reading that we're going to take. Um, so let's say we've got a little thermometer here, okay? And uh, <laughs> let's say it's got, uh, there, there's the reading right there. And we're reading 75 degrees, okay? So this could be an example. Obviously, you wouldn't have a uh, mercury-filled th thermometer out there in the field. You'd have some sort of an electronic device uh, taking this reading. But um, so here's a reading. Um, we need to communicate that value across a network, and uh, we also uh, need to start thinking about all the associated information with this reading that that we're going to need. Um, basically the the database of information we're going to keep about all of our instrumentation so uh, I've already talked about all these things but we're going to go through them in the example so let's say this uh, let's say this thermometer goes down to minus 10 degrees and it'll read all the way up to 120 so maybe we're just reading ambient temperatures here um, and this is what we expect a reasonable range to be so this becomes our minimum value our min and this becomes our max. Uh, you might also talk about the zero and the span. So the zero would be minus 10 and my span would be 130, right? I can read a possibility of 130 degrees. Um, my engineering unit. Okay, is going to be degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so when I read that 75, obviously it's, it's going to make a huge difference if that's you know degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius or, or whatever so uh, it's important for me to know my engineering units um, this is obviously going to be a floating point tag right we talked about what kind of uh, tag it's going to be so it's going to be floating point I want a real value here this could be 75.3 even okay I'm gonna have a timestamp okay so my timestamp might be uh, something like January 1st of 2013 at midnight okay I'm gonna take uh, 12 a.m. so that would be my timestamp um, so those are all the kind of metadata type information that I would have um, I might give this a tag name so uh, it might be temp yeah, one, two, three, four dot value or something like that. Okay. Um, so that's how I would tell this temperature from any other temperature. And I might have a descriptor. And that could be whatever ambient temperature, ambient temp, uh, main office or something like that okay so maybe I've just got a little thermometer outside my main office I want to know what the amb ambient temp is so I've created a tag for that so that's all my tag information now there's also a bunch of other things for for instrumentation that I might need to know so maybe I want to know the manufacturer and the model and the install date Um, maybe there's uh, calibration, right? Maybe I have to calibrate this thing once a year. So I want to, uh, let's say, calibration records. So what I'm trying to do here is just kind of get you to start thinking about all the things that, all the associated data that goes with the values that you're reading. That uh, you know, it seems pretty simple. You just go, oh, okay, I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a temperature measurement and uh, that's not too complicated but then you start looking at all the associated values with it the minimum and the maximum the engineering units the the tag type or the point type uh, the value type um, the timestamp when the reading was taken uh, the tag name that we use to uniquely identify this tag name has to be unique across our entire system uh, you know one tag per value um, the descriptor you know maybe uh, Maybe there's some other things, other descriptors or other associated tags that we put in here to make it easier to search for data. Uh, the manufacturer, the model, the install date, calibration records, any of that kind of stuff. 
Um, you can imagine that uh, as I'm managing a, a, a large electric grid and maybe I have thousands of these temperature readings out there, or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of them, that uh, being able to keep track of all this stuff so that maybe if uh, later on down the road they say, oh, this temperature sensor from this manufacturer has a high failure rate and you should be replacing those because they're all going to fail in the next couple of years. Uh, it'd be really nice for you to be able to go to your database and do a quick search for those manufacturers, produce a list, and then make your plans to go out there and uh, replace those. Um, or maybe the, the, the instrument has a good 10-year lifespan and then after 10 years the failure rate goes up. So, you know, you, you, every year you go and uh, produce a report, how many of them are nine years old? Those are the ones you need to replace this year before they start failing. Uh, calibration records, this becomes really important. Um, you know, not so much maybe for a temperature reading, but there are other, uh, other readings where calibration becomes really important. Maybe this thing needs to be calibrated a couple of times a year. And so you go and you look on the computer screen and you see 75.3 and you go, ah, oh, that doesn't seem right. You start trying to figure out what's going on and you find out that this thing's supposed to be calibrated twice a year and it hasn't been calibrated in two years. Well, maybe that's why your 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 uh, value here is drifting. So these are all the kind of things that you need to think about um, when you're thinking about building telemetry systems. Um, certainly, depending on uh, the type of system you're using, maybe the manufacturer's already kind of figured all this stuff out. Um, a lot of times, maybe the manufacturer hasn't thought about some of the things that you need to do, and so. Uh, you're going to need to build additional capabilities on the system to make it more manageable for you. So uh, anyway, like I said, these are just kind of practical real world concerns in building telemetry systems and they're things that I want you to start thinking about. Um, later on down the road we're going to start playing with uh, a data historian, the Pi system. Um, the Pi system has a lot of these things defined, predefined that you have to put in there for the tags. Uh, but it also has the flexibility to allow you to add a lot of additional information um, and that's at your discretion so if you've thought about these kind of things up front maybe you can uh, you know be proactive put these things in your system to start with uh, and then when you need them they're there um, rather than getting down the line and saying oh I've got all these old sensors out there that I need to replace and I don't you know I don't have any way of knowing where they are somebody's gonna have to go around to each location and inventory them for me It'd be a lot easier if you just took that information when you deployed the system initially so uh, again this stuff is very important and I want you to start thinking about thinking about practical implications of this